whole bunch of announcements. First, um, the Advent dinner is coming up this coming Wednesday evening. I've been told that Mel is preparing prime rib, so if you haven't signed up, you still have some time to do that. There's a sign-up sheet over in the, um, in the fellowship hall. The Advent event is next Sunday, um, and if you have not signed up, Janice here, do we need to sign up for that? Anybody from Children's Ministry team know? For the Advent event next Sunday, I think you just show up for that. Um, <coughs> Okay, if you can help it any way, that's why they, you need to sign up. So if you could, uh, if you're interested in bringing some food or helping to clean up or set up, there's a sign-up sheet over there. Feel free to put your name down. Um, Bill, any, we have we are starting today the UCM toy drive. That's what the big red box on the chancel is for. Bill, any comment or questions or uh, other information about that? I know other than very worthy and. If you are Amazon savvy, you could go there and you select gifts. So, uh, any, really, all gifts are wonderful and up to 14 years of age. Okay, and you bring the gift in. Oh, there we go. Thank you, Corey. You're wonderful. Um, bring your gift in. You can leave it in the box here, and then it will be distributed um, by UCM to needy families. So, give generously to that. Um, we also have a brand new mission opportunity for you to be part of, and Megan is going to tell us a little bit about that right now. Hi, good morning. Um, yep, why don't you use this, and we can give you this mic. Um, there you go. Great, right, thanks. Um, Mount Vernon Presbyterian Church has a long history of supporting those in our community who don't have permanent housing or shelter, and this year we have a mission opportunity that continues that tradition. We're going to do um, cooperating with New Hope Housing to help create Christmas meal baskets for clients of that project. In the last year, New Hope Housing has helped 199 single adults and 61 families move into uh, permanent housing from shelters or from the streets. Uh, so there are many of them celebrating their first holiday in their new house, but still with stretched budgets and um, this is an opportunity to help them have a traditional uh, Christmas meal. So what we're gonna do is on Friday, December 11th and Saturday, December 12th, we have, we'll take shifts at the Holland Hall Safeway, the one down Fort Hunt Road, um, standing outside and passing out to shoppers, little shopping lists, a wish list from New Hope Housing about what kinds of foods can go into these baskets and asking people to add one or two or maybe even all of the items to their shopping list and then bring it back out and we'll bring it over to the church, pack it up into baskets and take it over to, to New Hope Housing. So this is a great opportunity not only for us to continue something that we've traditionally been very involved in and helping um, people without permanent homes in our, in our community, but also I think this is a great opportunity for people to do things with their families. It's a thing that kids and, and younger people can be involved in too, and um, you know, working together too. So I have a sign-up sheet that I'll have over at uh, the coffee hour. Right now I've broken it into two-hour shifts, but feel free to coordinate with somebody else, somebody you'd like to work with, or if you have a family you think two hours might be a little too long, break it up with, with somebody else. Um, it's two days, Friday and Saturday, and if we can fill this all this all up, I think that'll be a great, a great contribution that we can make. It also makes Mount Vernon Presbyterian Church visible in the community, because we'll be talking to people as they're coming in and out. So thank you in advance for your support. Thank you so much, Megan. Are there any other announcements that need to be Lift it up this morning. Yeah, that's coming. Anything more? All right. 89 shoeboxes were collected for Operation Christmas Fire. Thank you. And thank you, Hazel, for kind of coordinating that. And Faye, thank you guys for coordinating that. We appreciate it. All right. Advent is upon us. Quiet your hearts. Still all the noisy voices of this season. Tune your hearts to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit and let us together worship our God.
This morning we light the first candle on our Advent wreath, a wreath where, like our world, we often find more darkness than light. So we patiently wait and passionately work for the peace of God that is revealed in the way of Jesus, our Prince of Peace. And we pray with all the nations of the world, saying, Come thou, long-expected Jesus. Heavenly Father, in this season of thanks and giving, we are grateful for all you have provided for us. A warm and welcoming church home, friends and family who care deeply for us, love and encouragement in our daily lives, shelter above our heads, plentiful food on our tables, and your ceaseless love. For this and so many other blessings, we are thankful. Let us use this time of year when we're thankful to inspire us to be more giving of ourselves in so many creative and useful ways. To share warm winter coats with families in need at a clothing drive. To give the homeless people we see every day on our way into our office a few of the cookies we're taking in for the holiday office party. To give of our time and money to a worthy charity. To simply reach out and make a phone call to a friend we haven't spoken to in far too long. Lead us along this journey to be better givers of ourselves. Let us be thankful for all that we have, but use it to inspire us to greater giving. Help us to share our abundance of gifts, our skills and talents, our time and energy, our monetary offerings, whatever unique gift it is that each of us may have to offer with others around us who are in greater need than us. We ask in your name. Amen. Christmas around the world Advent series this morning, I invite you to 
listen to our next scripture lesson first in Spanish and then in English. Justo de Mesías, del tronco de Isaías saldrá una vara y un vástago retornará de sus raíces y reposará sobre él el Espíritu del Señor, Espíritu de sabiduría y de inteligencia, Espíritu de consejo y de poder, Espíritu de conocimiento y de reverencia al Señor. Se le estará en reverencia al Señor. No juzgará según la apariencia, ni se dirá por lo que oigan sus oídos, sino que juzgará con justicia a los pobres y decidirá con equidad en favor de los mansos de la tierra. Herirá la tierra con la vara de su boca y con aliento de sus labios matará al impío. La justicia será cinto de los lomos y la fidelidad señaló de su cintura. Dicha de los reñidos, morará el lobo con el cordero y el leopardo con el cabrito se acostará. El becerro, el león y la bestia doméstica andarán juntos y un niño los pastoreará. La vaca y la osa pasarán en compañía, sus crías se echarán juntas y el león comerá paja como el buey. El niño de pecho jugará sobre la cueva de las pi y el recién deleitado este, extenderá su mano sobre el escondrijo de la víbora. No harán mal ni dañarán en todo mi santo monte, porque la tierra estará llena del conocimiento del Señor, como el agua llena el mar. En ese tiempo la raíz de Isaías será la bandera de los pueblos. Las naciones se juntarán a ella y el lugar de su reposo será glorioso. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His, de his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall, he shall judge the poor, and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the, fatling, and the fatling together. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious.
this time with the boys and girls. Join me down front on the platform for the children's sermon, please. Guys, our Advent candle went out already. Can you believe that? Uh Uh-oh. Come on. Cross your fingers. There we go. So, how many of you have your Advent wreath up at home? Okay, that's what you're going to do today, right? Yeah, I hope so. Did you guys get your Advent devotional booklet in Sunday school last week? You didn't? Well, if you did not get one, they're at both entrances this morning. Okay, and what I, what I hope you and your mom and dad and brothers and sisters will do is you're going to take that booklet, and every night at dinner, when you light the Advent candle, there's a reading for you to do in there. Um, and it's about a different country around the world. And then you can take a sticker from the back and you have to find the country on a map of the world and you have to put the sticker on it, okay? So this week you're gonna light just that first candle. Guess what it stands for? Gifts. Gifts, that's the best part of Christmas, isn't it? Come on, you can say that. Yeah, we all know that's what you think. We think that's, as we get ready for the holidays, that's one of the most exciting parts is our gifts. Have you made your list yet? Yeah, I figured that. So tell me one, just one thing that's on your Christmas gift list this year. What is it? I'm not even going to try to repeat them because I won't even know. Black, Black Ops 3, okay. Flip it? Fitbit. Oh, a Fitbit. I do know what that is. Okay. Here, you just talk. Guys, talking. What is it? Bunches. Oh, whatever that is. A Nerf gun. I know what that is. PS4. One thing on your Christmas list. You didn't make it yet. Okay, that's all right. That's good. One thing on your Christmas list. Um, frozen purse. A frozen purse. Like, like you put it in the freezer and then it's going to be cold? <laughs> I, I haven't made it yet. You haven't made yours yet? Is your, has he made a list yet? No. So, those are all wonderful gifts. But, um, you've probably heard me say this before. You know what the best gift of Christmas is? Jesus. He really is. He's the best gift that God could possibly give us. Why? Any idea why Jesus is such a great gift? Because I know you're probably thinking, I don't know, I think a frozen purse is a little nicer than Jesus. Are you thinking that? Yeah. (laughs) What makes Jesus such a great gift? Turner? Yeah, he came... The Bible says that he came to show us abundant life. And, and to me, I, I know there's a lot, of, a lot of these toys that you mentioned, a PS4 or a frozen purse or a Fitbit, all those things. Those are wonderful gifts. But, but Jesus came to show us how to find real happiness in life. And as you get older, you will discover more and more about that. The way that Jesus lived his life is a way that makes our lives. And I bet if you were to ask all these big people out here, they would tell you the same thing that I am. That Jesus showed us how to live so that we might be really, really happy in this life. Because Disney's going to come out with another movie and that frozen purse, Caitlin, that's, it's going to get buried in your closet somewhere and you're going to forget all about it. And that fit... And yeah, when you get your age right, or when you get my age, that Fitbit watch, I don't know if that's going to be such such a great thing that you're going to want to wear anymore. But Jesus, he shows us how to live every day and he helps us find real happiness in life. So that first candle, 
on our Advent wreath that you're going to light all this week, it's a reminder of the gifts of the season. But the greatest gift is Jesus. Okay? Let's pray, and then you guys can go back to your seats. Thank you, God, for the greatest gift we could get. Jesus. And we pray in his name. And everybody said, Amen. All right. And thank you so much for sitting so nicely down here today. Good job, you guys. Okay? It is a first. <laughs> you, can, you can go back to your seat. Our second scripture reading this morning, in English only, comes to us from John's Revelation, the last book of the Bible, chapter 22. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to you this morning. John writes, Then the angel showed me a river with the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb. It flowed down the center of the main street. On each side of the river grew a tree bearing 12 crops of fruit with a fresh crop each month. The leaves were used for medicine to heal the nations. No longer will there be a curse upon anything for the throne of God and of the Lamb will be there 
and his servants will worship him. And they will see God's face. And God's name will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun. For the Lord God will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Then the angel said to me, Look, I am coming soon. Blessed are those who obey the words of prophecy written in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw all these things. And when I heard and saw them, I fell down to worship at the feet of the angel who showed them to me. But the angel said, No, don't worship me. I am a servant of God, just like you and your brothers, the prophets, as well as all who obey what is written in this book. Worship only God. Then he instructed me, do not seal up the prophetic words in this book, for the time is near. I am coming soon, bringing my reward with me to repay all people according to their deeds. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I am the bright morning star. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, let anyone who hears this say, Come. Let anyone who is thirsty, Come. Let anyone who desires to drink freely from the water of life, Come. Yes. I am coming soon. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people forever. Friends, this is the word of the Lord and the poetry of the faithful. Thanks be to God. Well, let me begin this morning by, um, by thanking Jose and Nancy for helping out in this first Sunday of this Advent series. We're kicking off, as I already indicated, Christmas around the world. Jose and Nancy were part of our adult education class, if you missed it, and they have also prepared some Puerto Rican, actually I think Nancy did most of the preparing of Puerto Rican goodies for the coffee hour. So if you stick around, you'll enjoy some treats from their homeland. And it's just beginning this morning. If you are visiting with us, or if you're not aware of what is happening, let me bring everybody up to speed this morning. We're basically journeying around the world for the next four weeks, considering how the birth of Christ is celebrated in other nations and lands. And there are a couple ways for you to really get the most out of this series. First, by being here in worship. Next week... At 9.30, again in one of our adult education classes, we're inviting people to come prepared to share briefly, three to five minutes, about some aspect of the season that they continue to hang on to today that is from their nation, national heritage, from their country of origin. Then at 10.30 in worship, our children are presenting a holiday musical that, yes, is titled Christmas Around the World. So you can come and be part of that. In two weeks, we're back to focusing again on one country, and that day it will be Ghana, again in Sunday school, in worship, and during the coffee hour. And finally, on the last week of Advent, December 20th, we'll be traveling to Norway. So come and be part of what I truly hope will be some meaningful Sunday morning experiences. A second way for you to plug in, as I already mentioned to our children, is using the devotionals that have been prepared for our families. Each day they will take you to a different country and explain a little bit about that country's celebration of Christ's birth. And while it is clearly designed for children, adults, you may get something out of it as well. So again, those devotionals are at both entrances. Grab one, take it home. Put it by your Advent wreath and use it over the next few weeks. Finally, if you are not from Puerto Rico, Ghana, or Norway, then we'd like you to put together, or at least consider putting together, a wreath. A wreath 
with decorations from the country of your heritage that we will be putting throughout our worship space in two weeks from today on December 13th. We only have 10, but they will be available after worship in Melinda's office. She will be in there. And um, if you'd like to take one home, decorate it and bring it back in two weeks, we want to have symbols of all the nations that are represented in our church family that we can put on the walls for Christmas. So um, one of those three ways, jump into this series and really help make it a meaningful time for all of us. Lastly, as I do every year, I encourage you to fit Christmas Eve worship into your holiday plans. I know it's a busy night, but I especially encourage you to do that this year because of all that is going on in our world. Because on this Christmas Eve, we're going to move from the whole concept of Christmas around the world to peace upon the earth and what that really means for us today. So um, mark your calendars. Five o'clock is a family celebration. 7.30 Christmas Eve is our traditional candlelight time. So, okay, no more announcements. Let's pray. God, speak. Speak into our lives this morning. As our bright morning star, shine your light on your word and speak into our worlds. For Jesus' sake, amen. Well, if we ever need to be reminded that scripture is both the word of the Lord, and the poetry of the faithful. It is when we read passages like both of the ones that have been read this morning. Both Isaiah and Revelation are books that simply cannot be read in a literal way and rather need to be approached for their more than literal meaning. Because that's where the real power is. That's where we find the message in God's word this day. Isaiah's words. Isaiah's words this morning paint for us a beautiful picture of the hope that God has for creation. And it is a hope centered around what we know today as the way of the Christ. A new way. A way that is not all tied up in some kind of rigid form of spiritual legalism, but rather a way that is rooted and grounded in justice, righteousness, peace, and love. And the imagery that Isaiah offers is beautiful in its power. It gives us cause to remember not only Jesus coming 2,000 years ago, but also remembering the fulfillment of God's plan for creation that has yet to be realized. And both, both are important part of our Advent celebrations. The events that occurred 2,000 years ago are important, as well as that which is yet to come. That which many in the church often poetically refer to as the second coming of Jesus. That time when, as we heard in both Spanish and English, the wolf will lie down with the lamb. When all wrongs will be made right. When justice in other passages from the Hebrew scriptures tell us other passage that say justice will roll down like waters and swords will be beaten into plowshares. Advent is about both. And it's important for us to remember that. It is about preparing to remember Jesus' birth, but it is also about this ongoing call of God to bring heaven to earth. And this time of year, our attention always needs to be on both. The branch, the new branch that Isaiah spoke about from David's family tree is the author's way of giving 
his people hope. At a time when Israel needed hope. A time when they, it was a time when they were forced to deal with all kinds of conflict with neighboring Assyria, foreign invaders, unwanted outsiders, strangers, and aliens. Just like today, Israel was trying to figure out how to deal with people who had different ambitions and desires, different customs and traditions. Because while the world was certainly far less interconnected 2,500 years ago than it is today, no doubt about that, Israel and all the nations of the world, they still, even then, had to come to grips with the fact that they were not the only ones with hopes and dreams. All people have them. And trying to figure out how to live together when those hopes and dreams conflict with one another, that is always a challenge. And it certainly was for the people of Isaiah's day. So the prophet represents God's call to them to a new way of being. One that eventually brought us to this anointed messenger. This Jesus. His new way is what Isaiah is referencing. And it is a way which interestingly still remains new today. 2,500 years later. Because we still have not grasped the wisdom of Jesus' message. This new way about justice for the poor, about fairness for the exploited, it was a way that is still meant to bring about a peaceable kingdom. Whereas our opening hymn points out, this way truly becomes the desire of every nation. This way, this truth, this life, it is the only way to God and to God's kingdom. This holy way of Jesus. And that's where the reading from Revelation enters the picture. Written several hundred years after Isaiah, the author here is attempting to tell us that we cannot, that we must not ever give up on the way. Because, it, while, it, because while it may not be here yet, because while it may not be the way of all the people of the world, the way of Jesus still remains our only hope. It is still the greatest gift we could ever hope for. Like Isaiah, Revelation was also written to a people dealing with a world full of violence and war. And so it too was a book designed to give people hope to encourage them, and dare I say us, never to give up, but to keep on pursuing the peaceful and the just ways of God, which have been revealed in Jesus Christ, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the bright morning star. Now, what does all this have to do with Puerto Rico, you may ask? Jose's over there wondering, what on earth does this have to do with Puerto Rico? <laughs> well, like most Christian traditions, we celebrate this gift of God's way by the giving of gifts during this time of year. And while the Western world has perhaps gone a little overboard, while we Americans have perhaps gone a little overboard, with all the Black Friday shopping and Online Monday and Small Business Saturday, which are all, all about just buying more and accumulating more, while we may have gone overboard just a little bit, while too often our gift giving only encourages the materialism of an already greedy culture, sharing gifts 
The sharing of gifts with those we love is an important part of this season. And for many Puerto Ricans, this aspect of their holiday celebrations is patterned after the story of the Magi, who brought gifts to the Christ child. So in Puerto Rico, and if you were in Sunday school, you heard this already, kids leave these little bunches of straw wherever they go throughout the season of Advent. Throughout the season of Christmas, they leave these little bundles of straw in the homes or near people from whom they want to receive a gift. And tradition tells them that that straw will entice the camels of the wise men to visit those various locations and leave gifts for them. Just the way gifts were left for the Christ child. Advent, Christmas, they are the season of gifts, the greatest of which is Jesus. Because his way this amazing way given to us by God is the only way to find the peace, the abundant life that God so desires for each of us. And it is this gift that we remember and celebrate on the first Sunday in Advent. And it's why we begin this Advent season right here at the table of the Lord. This table reminds us that Jesus' way is God's way. It is a table around which we remember that the real bread of life is about the feeding of a different kind of hunger. It's a table where the cup of salvation is about a thirst that can only be quenched through the living water of Jesus. It's a table where we are reminded to walk in the way of the Christ, God's greatest gift to all the world. So I invite you now, as the resurrected body of Christ in the world today, to remember, to give thanks for God's greatest gift. This is the joyful feast of God's people. Scripture tells us that Someday, people will come from the east and from the west, from the north and the south, from every tribe and nation of the world. And together, we will sit at one table with our Creator. When Jesus gathered at table with his disciples the night he was betrayed, he had a vision of that day. And he told his friends how they might participate in that day's coming. When they were reclining at table, he took the bread that had been blessed for the Passover meal and he broke it. And then he gave it to his friends and he said, take, eat. This is my body, broken in love for you. And then in the same way, he took the cup, and that too, he gave to his friends, saying, this cup is the cup of the new covenant in my blood poured out for the forgiveness of all your sins. All of you, drink remember me.
when Paul tells about this event in his letter to the church at Corinth, he says that whenever we eat the bread, whenever we drink from the cup, we are again proclaiming the Lord's death until the kingdom truly does come. Let us pray. God, continue to give us glimpses of this kingdom and daily show us how we might walk faithfully, participating in making it a reality here and now. It is food. This spiritual food feed us for the journey. And may these symbols of bread and juice become now for us powerful reminders of the bread of life, cup of salvation. Feed us this day as only you can do, God. For the sake of Jesus, who taught us when we pray to say together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Would our communion servers please come forward at this time? For those of you who may be new, we receive by intinction here at Mount Vernon. You can come forward, take a piece of bread, which is gluten-free, dip it into the cup, and then return to the seat by the side aisles. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God, taste and see that the Lord is good.
Before our closing prayer, we will spend some time sharing joys and concerns. While we're doing that, ushers, I invite you forward to receive our offering. What would you like to lift up to our God this morning in prayer? Joys, concerns? Okay? Okay, give me his first name again. His first, Mike? Kay's brother-in-law, Mike, has been diagnosed with lung cancer. We want to remember him and his family this morning. Yes. Continued prayers for Betty Vosbeck. We will keep her and you and your dad and your whole family in our prayers this morning. Ruth, um, Jim Gerard went home, I believe, last week. Do we have an update on how he's doing? Making progress, we know that. He Anybody should be else? at Mount Vernon Rehab. He, he's still at Mount Vernon Rehab? I thought... We thought he came home. Oh. I, I heard he was coming home sometime at the end of last oh, week. Okay. So okay. we will continue to keep him and Ruth, Jim and Ruth in our prayers and um, pray for him. I, that's what I thought. It was on Thanksgiving he was supposed to be coming home, so... We'll keep them in our prayers this morning. Nancy? Okay, we'll continue to give thanks for family and friends and all those wonderful feelings we got after Thanksgiving celebrations. We had a wonderful um, turnout here for worship Thanksgiving Eve. Um, it was wonderful to just have co the community come together from so many different churches. We had somebody from a church who, that wasn't even represented clergy-wise, so it was just wonderful to be here, and hopefully that will become a, a growing tradition in this part of Alexandria. Jim, did you have a... Okay, continued prayers for Jim's brother, Walt, who's undergoing chemo for, for cancer. We will remember him. Yes, Elise? For Elise's niece and her husband, they're both being sworn in as United States senators. We, citizens. I'm thinking, who are these people? I've not heard of them before. Citizens. <laughs> yeah. They're becoming citizens. Yes, we will definitely pray for them this morning. Next step is a senator, right? <laughs> Sorry about that. Anything else? Yes, Eleanor. For Eleanor's 105-year-old friend that um, she cares for. One we will remember him, her, her. What's her first name, Kevin? Can I ask? Dorothy Jane. We will remember her today. God, you have heard our prayers. You know what's going on in our lives. You know what's going on in the world. And you are involved even before we can ask. Your spirit prompts people who are in tune with what you're doing to extend grace and mercy and love and compassion all the time. We continue to pray for sensitivity to that spirit's prodding in our lives, those hunches, that something in our gut that just tells us to move, to act, to respond. God, we pray for sensitivity to that holy urging. We thank you for the season of thanksgiving through which we have all come. May gratitude continue to shape our lives. As Martin prayed at the beginning of worship this day, God may have prompted us to be givers, not just receivers, all the time. And as we step now into this season of Advent and ultimately Christmas, we pray yet again for a new sense of your presence in our lives and in our world. And we cry out with all creation, Come, Lord Jesus.
come. All by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand now for our closing. Now, friends, as you go forth from this place, know that our God goes with you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over you, within you to strengthen you, and always know that he goes before you to show you his way. And all God's people agreed and said,